Hello, and welcome to my Fallout 76 video. I am CJRox87, and I am a brand new YouTuber. Today, I am presenting to you one of my favorite builds, a bloodied heavy gunner build. Now, I know some of you may not be a huge fan of bloody builds, and that's okay. I really wasn't a fan of them until recently. However, this build not only enables you to deal massive damage, but also enables you to survive everything as well. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. To start things off, the weapon that I am using is a Gatling Plasma. And this is a three-star legendary with the Vampire's Effect, 25% weapon speed, and 250 damage resistance while reloading. Uh, I chose the Vampire's Effect because this enables you to tank a ton of damage. You will never go down while you are firing your gun, and uh, you will be able to heal all damage. And that 25% weapon speed is there to increase our DPS, and it increases our DPS pretty significantly. Uh, so I do recommend getting that one as well. Um, I would recommend getting rolling a Vampire's first and foremost, and then trying to roll for the second star, because that is going to be the most difficult one. Uh, the third star really isn't important. Um, this is the effect I got. Um, the, a better effect would be uh, breaks 50% slower, but by all means, if you don't get that, it's not the end of the world. Um, the mods that I am using today is the prime receiver to max out our damage, uh, rifle barrel, standard magazine, standard sight, the beam focuser, and I'm using the battle scar paint. Uh, right now it's showing our damage at 194, and that is before buffs. Next is the power armor that I'm using, and I am using a full set of Union power armor. Uh, the reason I'm using this is for the carry weight and poison resistance bonuses, and that uh, poison resistance actually saves me a perk card. The oh, the legendary effect that I'm going for on my power armor is the Overeaters effect. I currently only have two pieces of it. Um, you know, it is kind of a grind to roll them. So, um, yeah, I currently only have two. I will be trying to roll the rest later on. And that Overeaters effect increases your damage reduction up to 6% as you fill your hunger and thirst meters. And that damage reduction is per piece that you have that legendary effect on so it is very powerful uh, when I even just got my first piece of overeaters I did notice my I did notice that damage reduction it is significant and noticeable uh, so I can imagine with a full set of overeaters that you will be even more tanky and be able to be even more of an immortal tank uh, the mods I am using on my power armor uh, I am using targeting HUD on my helmet. Uh, this is to light up enemies. Uh, I have a hard time seeing a lot of the enemies in the background. They kind of blend in for me. So uh, this this kind of helps me with that. Um, it does kind of bug out time to time. It doesn't always uh, highlight the enemies. Uh, so it, it won't work like 24-7. But for the most part, it, it does work pretty well. Uh, next on my arms, th uh, this one isn't really important. I'm using optimized bracers. This is to reduce our power attack on melee weapons, and I really only use this because I like to use an auto axe uh, when there's like a mutation for uh, resilience. Uh, only kill enemies with a melee attack, so this is why I run that. And then on my torso, I am running emergency protocols, and uh, this is going to reduce our damage by 50% and 25% extra move speed when our health is below 20%. And since we are a bloody build, we will always have this active. Uh, and this is what enables us to tank a ton of damage. Last but not least, on my legs, this is a quality of life mod. I have uh, calibrated shocks, and this is just to increase our carry weight by 50 per leg. Um, if you feel like you don't need that extra carry weight, feel free to use a different mod. This is totally up to you. All right, that concludes our weapon and power armor. Uh, now let's go ahead and get into the perks. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and show off my base starting special s points first. 
And I am starting off 10 in strength, 1 in perception, 9 in endurance, 4 in charisma, 15 in intelligence, 7 agility, and 10 luck. All right, that's before legendary perk cards are applied. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and go over the legendary perk cards first, because they affect the rest of the build. So to start, I have legendary agility maxed out, legendary strength maxed out, legendary endurance maxed out, and legendary luck maxed out. So that's four different special stats we have. We're getting plus five to each of those special point stats. Um, so 20 extra specials. Um, to be honest, you can really pick any four that you want. The only one I would not recommend upgrading would be the charisma. And that is just simply because we do not need that extra charisma in our build. It would be a waste, and it would be a waste of points. So don't use charisma. But yeah, pretty much any other four special stats you can use. Um, I'm also using Electric Absorption. Uh, I currently have mine at rank 3. Uh, that's because I've already maxed out my other cards. Uh, I would definitely not max this out first. Keep it at 1 star. Very useful even at 1 star. It still procs pretty frequently. Um, obviously, it gets a better chance the more you upgrade it. But yeah, I would recommend actually upgrading these special stats before electric absorption but this is still a very strong one and I would always keep this one equipped because you're gonna recharge your power armor fusion core and restore health every time you uh, take energy damage uh, last but not least I'm using uh, power armor reboot um, Honestly, you can kind of use whatever you want here. Uh, I simply use Power Armor Reboot because I felt like I wanted that um, extra survivability if I go down. Uh, however, if you're not using Union Power Armor, I would definitely recommend you replace Power Armor Reboot with Funky Duds instead. And uh, that's going to give you that poison resistance that you're lacking. Like if you're using T65 or Hellcat Power Armor instead, yeah, definitely use Funky Duds. Uh, you're going to need that poison resistance. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and go into the regular perks for the build. Okay, so with all of our um, legendary perk cards are, this is what our special stats look like now. Uh, so starting off in strength, uh, I have it at 15, and the first one I have is maxed out traveling pharmacy, and this is going to reduce the weight of all my chems, including stim packs. And this is very necessary. I carry a lot of stim packs and chems, and uh, this saves me a lot of carry weight. Uh, this is definitely something to drop if you don't have all the legendary perk cards maxed out. Next, I have all three heavy gunner. Sorry about that, guys. All three heavy gunner perks maxed out. And that's to max out our damage. And then last on strength, I have blocker. And that is a tanking perk to reduce our opponent's melee damage. And this works very well, guys. Uh, do not use this build without this. You will die very frequently to ghoul melee attacks and other melee attacks if you if you don't have this equipped. It seriously affects your tanking ability, and it, it, yeah, this is mandatory for the build. Next, I have one in perception. Uh, this one is not important at all. I currently have glow sight on uh, when I fight enemies. Uh, I swap it out from time to time for green thumb when I collect plants, or if I want extra meat, I can you know swap it out for butcher's bounty. Really, it's up to you. Whatever you want to use here. Okay, I have 14 endurance, and uh, that's to give us uh, maxed out life giver. And then I also have chem fiend max out. Uh, this is to make our chems last 100% longer, and I am using psycho buffs, uh, so it makes our la psycho buffs last five minutes instead of two. Uh, next, I'm using Aqua Boy. Uh, this is kind of a quality of life perk. Uh, I don't like taking rad damage when I'm walking through water. Uh, this removes that, so uh, and uh, we don't have to constantly uh, fix our rads after after walking through water as being a bloody build. Uh, next, I have Fireproof. Uh, this is to reduce our flame attack and explosion damage. And uh, enough said, th this is mandatory for the build. You're going to need this to tank. And then I have Radical. Uh, the greater your rads, the greater your strength. Max plus 5 to strength. And uh, this is 
just a little icing on the cake for our bloody build gives us extra strength and carry weight very beneficial for the build uh, lastly in endurance I have rejuvenated uh, this just gives us a little bit better a better stats I am running the uh, overeaters and I do uh, stay fully fed and hydrated all the time so I am getting a little bit better benefits from these so we'll get a little bit better AP regen and health as well as disease resistance next I have four in charisma uh, this is to have strange in numbers uh, when you're on a team with at least one other player with the mutation this will make all your mutations stronger very strong I always recommend this on any build that you're using mutations on next I have tenderizer maxed out uh, this is to max out our damage all right now we're into intelligence I have intelligence at 15 and that's so we can have maxed out nerd rage uh, since we are a bloody build this is gonna uh, increase our damage resistance, our damage, and our AP regen. Uh, next we have stabilized. In power armor, heavy guns gain excellent accuracy and ignore 45% armor. And since we are using power armor with heavy guns, this is a no-brainer to use. Uh, next I have batteries included. Uh, that's going to reduce our energy weight ammo by 90%, and we are using the Gatling Plasma, and that is energy that is an energy weapon so we're going to be reducing the weight of all of our plasma cores uh, next I have scrapper this is definitely a quality of life perk um, some people may feel the need to keep this out of the build uh, I am a loot hoarder I pick up everything and I scrap everything so it was very inconvenient for me to have to keep putting this on and off all the time so I simply kept it on for my build uh, if you feel like you don't need it you can definitely drop it uh, last, I have uh, Gunsmith at rank 5. Uh, this is because our Gatling Plasma breaks very quickly. All energy weapons too, and the Gatling Plasma is no exception. Uh, so this helps us, uh, you know, repair it less. Uh, next in agility, I have maxed out through Hiker. Uh, this is to reduce our food and drink weights by 90%. And... I carry a lot of food and drink, so I find this necessary. Uh, again, if you uh, need room in your build, uh, you don't have all the legendary perk cards maxed out, you can definitely drop this. Uh, next, I have Born Survivor. Uh, falling below 20% health will automatically use a stim pack every 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, th this just helps us survive more in combat. And now we have maxed out Adrenaline, and this is for damage. And then lastly, in agility, uh, we have dodgy. This is one of our another one of our tanking perks, and uh, we're going to avoid 30% of incoming damage at the cost of 30 action points per hit. Uh, this works very well, allows us to tank a lot of damage. Uh, it works in conjunction with blocker and our other defensive perks to keep us alive. All right, now we're into luck. Uh, we have maxed out bloody mess for damage, uh, and then I also have maxed out ricochet. Uh, this gives us an 18% chance to deflect back some of enemies' range damage. Now, while this doesn't seem strong initially at first, it is in fact very strong. That 18% chance is per bullet, uh, so it does proc very frequently. And since we are using a vampire weapon, you will also be healed every time Ricochet procs while holding your vampire weapon. So this is going to help us survive a ton of damage. Next, we have Luck of the Draw. Uh, I kind of had an extra perk point to work with, in those, and I wasn't sure what to do with it, and I decided on Luck of the Draw. This gives us a little bit extra durability on our weapon. Uh, you can also swap this out for Curator if you use magazines or bobbleheads, or if there's a different perk that you feel like you want, you can definitely use that here. Uh, next, I have Class Freak. This is a mandatory perk for the build uh, we will have our strength greatly reduced if we do not have this in our build uh, I have a ton of mutations on this build and the negative effects would just be too great if I did not have this card uh, next I have starch genes never mutate from rads and rad away will never cure mutations and just like the card says we just need it so we keep our mutations 
Lastly, I have Good with Salt. Uh, this is a quality of life perk as well. Uh, I keep a lot of food, and I don't like to craft it all the time, so uh, this helps it last longer for me. Uh, if you feel like you don't want to use this perk, you can also use One Gun Army. Uh, that'll give you extra stagger and uh, knockback and cripple. And it's not really needed for this build. I really didn't see a difference with it on, to be honest, and uh, I think Good with Salt is uh, needed for my build. But yeah, if you want to use One Gun Army, feel free. Alright guys, so that concludes the build. So now all that's left is I'm going to go ahead and show you how this performs out in the wasteland. So go ahead and give me a moment, and we're going to go ahead and head over to West Tech and check out those super mutants. Alright guys, we're over here at West Tech. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm all buffed up. And I do apologize, I didn't go over this before. I'll go ahead and go over it here real quick. Um, so, I am using mutations for this build. And the mutations I am using is Adrenal Reaction. Since we are uh, bloodied, uh, this is going to max out our damage at low health. Uh, the next one I have is Bird Bones. Uh, this is a quality of life mutation. Uh, it's going to reduce your fall speed. Uh, I'm sure if you've used Power Armor for any length of time, and you've fallen from a height, you have noticed that annoying animation that plays, uh, kind of like a superhero landing. Anyway, this will get rid of that. Uh, not completely. Um, if you still uh, fall from certain heights, you will still get that superhero landing, but uh, this kind of, uh, you know, makes it so, you know, that height has to be higher that you would have to fall from, so uh, this is really helpful if you feel I, I recommend it for power armor. The next one I have is Eagle Eyes, and uh, just ignore this one. This is I was using this one on my on one of my Vats builds, and it is completely not needed for this build. So um, you can actually save yourself one strength by keeping it off. Uh, next, I have Egghead. Uh, this is increasing our intelligence. Um, I just do this to max out my experience. Um, you don't have to have it, but uh, I do recommend it you'll level up much quickly with it. Uh, next I have Herbivore, and uh, this is a mandatory mutation for the build. This is what gives us our insane bonuses from our food and drinks. And uh, in a minute after the mutations, I will go ahead and go over what food buffs I use. Uh, next I use is Herd Mentality. Uh, while we're on a team, we will have plus two special. And actually, this turns to plus three when you have... Uh, when you have Stranger in Numbers uh, active, and all, all of these actually increase a little bit more too. Uh, and Herd Mentality is just to increase our special stats while we're on a team. I, I am always on a team, so yeah, this is a no-brainer, increases our stats. Uh, next I have is Marsupial, and this is to increase our jump height and our carry weight, and this makes us a ton more mobile. And I cannot imagine playing Fallout 76 without this mutation, so if you don't have it, go get it now. Uh, I even saw it at my camp, so if you ever see me out in the wasteland, go ahead and, you know, purchase it for my camp as well. Uh, next I have Scaly Skin, and uh, this is for damage resist and energy resist, just helps us tank better, so, you know, it's always good to have that extra, extra tankiness. Uh, lastly, I have Speed Demon, and this is to increase our movement speed and reload speed, and very useful. All right. Now, lastly, I'm going to go ahead and go over the food buffs. Um, so I use Tato Juice, Brain Fungus Soup, Corn Soup, Glowing Fungus Soup, and Silt Bean Soup. Uh, again, with uh, with Stranger and Numbers Active, these bonuses will be a little bit higher. Uh, I just currently have no one on my team. I'm in a custom world, so uh, not to be bothered. But yeah, if you have one other teammate on your team with a mutation, uh, it'll actually be max plus 25 AP, plus 5 intelligence, 8% uh, AP regen, 50 rat exposure resist, and 5 endurance. And uh, you can pretty much have those active all the time. The food lasts about 30 minutes. These are all super simple to craft. Um, the corn and tato can be grown in your camp. Uh, brain 
fungus, glowing fungus, and Silbean are super simple to find. Um, so these are all the buffs I use. And then I also use Psycho buffs. And that'll increase our damage. So I'm going to go ahead and eat my food. I'm going to make sure I'm topped off. I carry popcorn to top off my food and hunger for my overeaters effect. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply the psycho buff. Alright guys, let's go ahead and check out these super mutants now, and I'm going to show you the full force of this build. Alright, that's the first one, and he just got melted. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can survive this damage now. We're going to take an explosion here. Alright, and look, look guys, look. We took no damage there. None. And I'm not even... I'm not even... Attacking right now. I'm getting shot. And I'm still hardly taking any damage. Alright, let's go ahead and knock some of these guys up. And this is the power of this build. I'm not even using a bloodied weapon. Again, we're using that vampire weapon. And we're still doing massive damage. And look, see? You're reloading. And look, they're still not even doing damage. And that was a legendary, and we took him a little longer. Alright guys, so... This is how strong this build is. Alright. Now I'll go ahead and show off how it performs against the Mirelurk Queen. Alright, now I'm over here at Max Farm, and I'm going to go ahead and take down the Mirelurk Queen. Hold up, got to take out the trash first. Alright. Mirelurk Queen is in the middle of this pond, so let's go ahead and wake her up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let her get a few hits on me first. We're going to show the tanking power of this. All right, and she's already done her poison attack on me. And look, my health is going down, but I'm not dying. All right, now go ahead and... Oh, we're reloading. See? Look, we're taking all the damage, and our health still isn't going down. Now look how fast we've taken this queen out. I recommend you uh, aim on your weapon when fighting a boss... So you can keep shooting if you get staggered like that. You see, my gun moved, but I didn't stop shooting. Alright, and we took out that Marler Queen like it was nothing. This is how the build performs, guys. So this concludes my bloodied heavy gunner build. I hope you all did enjoy the video, and I hope you do give this build a try. It is very strong. Uh, if you did like the video, uh, please go ahead and drop a like and subscribe, so that way you can be notified the next time I release a video. I will be releasing a video every week, so please stay tuned for more videos. Uh, this is CJRox87, and I hope you all have a great evening.